believe is REZ 2018-02, Jackson Langley on behalf of CRV Venture and LSC Timmy Watkins Jr. Yes, sir. This case, um, staff has been honestly referring to it as Camp Rock because the operation of that camp for at-risk youth at this location on Brocky Ford is something that staff has been working with the applicants on uh, for some time now. And we believe that it is um, ready for your consideration tonight. I say that knowing that literally in a week, both their team and staff as a team has spent hours on this case to try to make it ready to the tune of literally 4.30 this afternoon. Um, really, just to start you at a high level view of the operation, what they're asking for is to take um, Pastor Watkins home, who is the pastor of Reverend Baptist Church, to take his home site and zone it to EA Agricultural, which is fine. I don't have any concern with that. Staff has no concerns with that. The comments and conditions and discussion really comes in with the operation of Camp Rock. You can see on their site plan that you have before you that 11 by 17 is the site plan that was given to us at 4.30 this afternoon. Since your this one right here, Jason? Yes, sir. Since the work session last evening, staff met with their team Tuesday morning, confirmed some of their plans and scope, um, confirmed that they wanted to move forward because staff was not convinced that, honestly, it was going to be possible to go this far this quickly. And they indicated they would like to try to move forward if possible. Um, so we worked towards that goal throughout the week all the way until this afternoon. The big highlights from the week include staff gave them comments. We gave them about 33 comments to try to address and negotiate. With that, um, they gave us a site plan last week. We gave them some additional comments. And honestly, between the site plan that you have now, we have those comments down to two. So there has been quite a bit of movement speaking with the applicants on, the, on both sides about trying to attempt to make this happen. What you have from staff is a recommendation of approval or approval with conditions um, from every department. So I think the overall motivation is staff believes the concept is ready even if there are minor tweaks to make before the county commission meeting on the 13th. We overall were just in favor of the use. Um, where we eventually settled out at is there's two conditions that staff talked about related to the buffers on the northern side of the property and the central part of the property. By northern side, we mean the property that is literally, and I'm going to see if I can't put a mouse here to show you. So the north side of the property is this property line here to the north, and this section of the property line here kind of to the northwest. The central part of the property is just this central portion of property right here in the middle. Um, there's an existing fence along this line, which is very nice and appropriate. We were talking about a potential buffer on these three lines here to the east, south, and west. So those five lines are where we kind of this afternoon just had to agree respectfully to just disagree on how we were going to move forward. Um, other than that, I mean, all the other comments conceptually have, have really been addressed to the satisfaction of staff. So I say that because while there might be some disagreement on those five lines, the host of the use, we feel like we've gotten to a place to where we really believe this could work and we really want to see it succeed. So whether the buffer is zero or 50 <coughs> or something in between, I just wanted to couch that because I don't want you to think that this disagreement is a deal killer for staff because it is not. It's just something we think is worthy of some discussion. So what we are proposing is, um, Ms. Braswell, the zoning administrator, and I have been meeting about what those buffer and setbacks mean. Honestly, if you look at straight requirements, we typically could see a 30 or 45 foot landscape buffer and setbacks in addition of 100 to 150 feet. We believed in addition to fencing requirements. Obviously, for this setting, we just did not believe that was appropriate. We believe that was just too much to be required for the applicants. The landscape's unnecessary. Um, the additional setbacks, we believe they've done a good job of trying to balance those buildings. And the fencing to go out there and tear something up, put a fence in, we just thought was overkill. So our initial counter was on those <coughs> five lines, not the whole property, just those five lines, can we do a 50-foot undisturbed buffer? Um, and they initially came back and said, well, well, we'll put a buffer in on the very eastern side, which is fine, agreeable, but on the southern side, which is um, 
this property line right here. Um, they initially agreed to a 50-foot undisturbed buffer, and ultimately this afternoon what they presented us with after some work on their part, which I'm not discounting, was basically letters from each of the adjacent property owners saying, summary, if you have copies of those, we like the use, um, we don't want a fence or a buffer there. So after receiving those at 4.30, Carmel and I conversing again, um, they had proposed no buffers along any of those lines, only the far eastern portion, which is shown on your site. plan. Uh, Carmela indicated that she would still like to see some kind of undisturbed buffer along those five lines. Um, I, you know, to me, I think it's important to have some buffer there, um, 50 feet. I mean, I could probably go down as low as 20. But right now, the applicants have indicated they wouldn't like to put anything. Obviously, the support of the current property owners is there. The concern from staff is just consistently, we think Camp Rock has the ability to be there for decade, decades beyond current property owners. What happens then? Shouldn't we be thinking farther ahead than the current property owners? And that's where really the difference in staff's opinion and the current applicant's opinion is. is um, they view that as a buyer beware. You know, if you buy after these property owners live off or move off, that's on you because the camp will have been there and have been approved, which I think is what we're working towards. Staff just believes there's some room for, um, in our opinion, a very light buffer that is undisturbed. We're not asking for any fencing. We're not asking for any landscaping. We just think there's some value to some protection there along those five, or if you include the southern boundary, those six lines. So that, that's where we are. Um, overall, we like the use. They have been very forthcoming. Their staff and team has worked very hard to get this for you to make it ready. Our staff has also worked hard to get this for you to get it ready. But that, to me, is the only place where, pending any public comment we're not aware of, that we feel like there's still some movement on those buffering requirements. So, so I have a question, Jason. On, I mean, on, on the southernmost border, mm -hmm. it looks pretty dense and foliage and stuff. It is. Okay, and so, and so just go back over with me on the south border. What, what do you think is this legitimate? So the <laughs> south border, if you would have looked at the site plan earlier in the week before the letters were presented, um, they proposed a 50-foot who proposed that? Uh, the uh, staff asked for it and staff the applicants, asked. yes sir, staff asked for it and the applicants, so here you can see the southern border, you can see a 50 foot undisturbed buffer. So that was their original, that was their proposal after staff said, can we talk about buffering? And they said, sure. And then after they obtained the letters, they removed that and said, look, our own property owners have said they don't want this buffer. So they removed that 50 foot and on your side plan, it's only along the far eastern boundary so staff knows there's trees there we believe the trees are great for the wilderness you know and the camp uh, we don't anticipate them to want to remove any of those trees but staff is thinking on down the line that if this is the only opportunity we get to address this site plan um, we think some kind of buffer there is appropriate undisturbed is just about as light as we can go beyond the fire of no buffer so we're getting into the weeds, but that's the only place that there has been some movement on the case that has not been resolved as of this afternoon. It appears that it's very dense. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so I mean, is, is this a deal breaker for you, Jason? No, no ma'am, it's not. I mean, we worked through a myriad of other conditions. Yeah. You know, our hope was, you know, if you have another neighbor move in who has an issue with the camp, Remember, the camp today is 10% um, of the size of its proposed maximum use. So it's 10, you're only seeing a tenth, the neighbors are only aware of one tenth of what we hope will grow to be a very successful operation. So our thinking is, let's think like it's developed. If it's completely developed and used like they want it to be used, should there be some protection that says those trees should remain as a buffer, whereas if there's nothing there, they don't have to be. And that was our concern. Is it deal breaker? It's not. I mean, if, you know, based on the applicant's reputation and what they've done so far, I don't think they're going to touch or clean out any of those trees. I think they'll just leave. I mean, they've indicated 
on multiple opportunities, they had, they've had the opportunity to not be a good neighbor, neighbor, and they've been a good neighbor. So their reputation is for being good. But staff's um, opinion is that some protection is due, and they've just said, we just have so much support from our neighbors right now, we don't think it's necessary. Uh, along with the Southern border, they're proposing a, a nature trail. I don't think they're going to go in there and tear up a bunch of trees to put in the nature trail. Mm -hmm. No, I mean if you look on the if you look on the site plan, that that nature trail is probably about 50 feet off. Yeah. The concern there being if something is done in the south or to the north, that by their own property rights they can do. I think the buffer, probably my biggest concern, is not for um, visual. It's probably most for privacy. It's probably just ensuring that when you have a 300 youth camp there, that those neighbors are afforded some privacy protection from from the camp and all of its occupants. Well, I would imagine that uh, knowing that they're going to be dealing with the with the youth and the handicap that would have to be paved, there have to be at least paved or, or concrete back there for the for anybody for wheelchair access. Mm -hmm. They have. They, they've indicated that you know. They want to make sure it's ADA compliant, and the, the youth um, are one part of their focus, but they also have a focus on potential um, special needs or, or disability type populations. So, you know, we, we don't have a concern they're not going to want to meet ADA requirements, right. even for the trails. Yeah. I mean, I would love, I, I really like the trail system, that's an advantage. I would hate them to lose that because of ADA requirements, but <laughs> we just didn't feel like we had enough time to. 100% run that to ground, so we left it on there because we think it's just, it really helps with the Well, community. I did meet with the applicants this afternoon, and uh, I don't think that there's going to be any problem with, I went down on the site visit and talked to them, and uh, I know that, that they're going to keep it ADA 100% before whatever it's required. Whether they can pave it with asphalt or do it with concrete, but I'm sure there's going to be, whatever it is, it's going to be acceptable. We do. I mean, we've devoted a healthy amount of time to what we consider a minor concern. But you're asking me, Jason, where where are things? That's where things are. One good question on that. So the, 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 the property owners in the south of this boundary, <coughs> if they decided to clear cut it and start flat road across there, they could do that. They sure could, sir. I mean, they are, you know, their surrounding zoning is agricultural. Okay. Any questions for staff? I'll deal with it a little bit. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. I want to verify something. You have agreed, or uh, <clears throat> y'all have agreed to put a buffer on the east side. Right. We have spoken to landowners on the east. You can see that it's a lower area, a, a large natural buffer mm -hmm. there. But 
you already you're gonna put one there and there's a fence on the on the north side. We're not gonna put it's already there's one. Oh well, well Mr. Oh. Mr. Thomas is yeah, property. Mr. Thomas is the property. There is already a fence That's correct. Out yeah. There. yeah, okay. Six foot but where you're there. talking about, uh, yeah, I wanna make sure I understand right. On the east side of Mr. Thomas's property is where you agreed to put a buffer? Or? No, the far east side of the, you, had, you see the, the big track, yeah. So right where the cursor is, all along the east side is where there would be a 50 foot buffer. We don't have a letter, we haven't discussed this with Plaindale Capital Assets, but I'm sure no objection to very signs probably too wet anyway back down in there to do anything else. So that's kind of a gimme. That's right. But all of the neighbors, Mr. Thomas, the one in the middle, um, the one on the north side of the property, and the neighbors on the south side of the property have all written letters that we submitted by 4.30 this afternoon. that none of them are questions for Any questions for representative? I on a couple of other things. I guess I, I was going to explain a little bit what Jay does out there if y'all have enough information. I want to sit down and you want me to give a quick overview. I just now. heard, I think what Jay said, I, I was, uh, he used the term at risk youth. youth and that's, I think that's the first time I heard it tonight, so if you want to expound upon that, please. Sure. Well, the focus out there is to serve foster children underprivileged youth. I've heard Jay talk about uh, putting on a camp for special needs children, but mainly foster children and through it, an effort with Camp Rock, which is a, a local 501c3 for that same purpose. And he actually operates the wilderness camp here, but does things in different locations around the county as well. Like the Christmas at Camp Rock is actually held on Miles County property serves a thousand kids in 40 counties in the state. That is by the same entity, but it's at a different location. Um, if if y'all seen the maximum capacity we're talking about out here is 300. Um, 300 children? Yeah. 300 total children and adults. And they like to operate on a lot of things in the morning. May I ask, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Wanda, where are, where are these children sourced from? Do they come through defects or are they with their parents? A little um, bit? Well, a lot of foster children. No, are, are, they're in foster homes. A lot of them are through foster care. Okay. That's right. And defects is uh, a part of the <coughs> part of working with Camp Rock. Mm -hmm. um, Jason touched on the two different classifications that we're requesting. See, the EA is the area where Pastor Jay's house is, and there's another house that's currently out there that's going to CC. Hasn't been used for that many years. We're just changing that going for what's being done out there now. And then the rest of it's the PDR, which is recommended by staff. You see a lot of stuff out there on that map, and we would love to see it all happen. Uh, it's not an immediate plan. It's Jay was asked to, to dream and what would he like to see if, if funding were no object, if he could go out there and do exactly what he wanted to do and this is what he came up with and I think it looks great. Now, the immediate goal are to bring the existing structures into compliance and focus on the cafeteria and storage. Capacity won't be immediately increased, but this is what we would love to see out there one day. You have a question you I got one. <clears throat> Make sure I understand. You agree with everything except the conditions? Yes. Sir. Okay. The set buffer. The setback conditions. The setback conditions. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the request come forward? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? There be none. Anyone here wishing to speak? in opposition of this request. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? There being none, Commissioner? I, I got a question, please, sir. 
Would you cover those conditions again for me, please? So, um, the initial conditions, once we got the site plan back and realized where they were going to um, be, were either a 50-foot buffer along those six lines of the site plan, or a 20-foot undisturbed, a 50-foot undisturbed buffer, or a 20-foot undisturbed buffer along those same six lines. That that was those were the conditions. We sent those honestly. We we had a meeting this morning at 9:30. Sent those about noon. Heard back about 4:30. So we kind of realized we were going to settle out. So all the conditions are related to the buffer. Yeah, the conditions are related to what, if any, buffer will be okay. put on those six lines. All right. I got my answer. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I could, I know I just wanted to clarify. Um, note number one really talks about the scope of the use, and that's where you get those 300 numbers from. So we realized that Camp Rock may have an event that goes above 300, and so we didn't tell them they couldn't do that. We just said, come see us for a special event permit. So we tried not to give them a ceiling. They couldn't at least come back to us administratively and try to work through. But those numbers typically for them, and those are from those they're really from good. them. That's right. Those numbers were limits they set because clearly the property can handle much more people, but they they put a limit on here's what levels we feel like we can live with at a at a full operation. Commissioners, any discussion amongst ourselves? You ready for a motion? Hi. Yeah. I don't think it is. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make another Mr. Wallace, do it. We recommend approval of this request. Uh, we've heard extensive uh, presentation, testimony, explanation regarding uh, how many uh, on staff and all the departments uh, favoring this and especially interested in seeing this uh, particular use and request it succeed. Uh, I think this is an important cause. You know how. We're probably going to have a situation where we'll have young people's lives positively impacted. It'll be memories made out there that people will remember for the rest of their lives. So I think we're going to support this and uh, let them improve. With no conditions. No conditions. Second. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. Ms. Carmella, that is 6 0. In favor of the vote. Jason, thank you so much for your hard work on that. Yes, sir. Now, Jason, let's go ahead to the next.